Ta-da! And welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. And indeed, it's a Merry Christmas and Happy Festive Seasons to you all. It may be a video that's coming a little bit late, but I thought about it and uh, anything that was going to be of any real value was going to be arriving under that Christmas tree. Well, so I thought anyway. Needless to say, it's a real quick one here. We're sorry about some delays here because we've been very busy again. We've, we've welcomed our first little addition to the family. So, of course, that, that's busy enough. And a few other projects uh, have been in the way. And we're still uh, in the current world environment waiting on uh, delivery to parts to come through that have been well delayed. But let us just see what Santa's brought in his sack today for this particular room. And let us get started here really quickly. So the first thing, of course, has been some track. I guess that's the most focal thing. Maybe it's not quite as exciting as uh, a locomotive underneath the uh, Christmas tree, but needless to say, um, it's some track. Now, uh, we've got our Pico, which we're gonna be using to uh, for, for most of what the layout's gonna have. But looking uh, back and spending a few minutes here, I had to refocus a little bit about what the layout is. We want happiness, we want simplicity, we want fun. Even so much so that as I, this, which will be the most complicated section track-wise of the layout, where we're obviously going to have our, our uh, two-line uh, two loop here, but we're also sending one down to the fiddle yard. And of course, the second one around is actually going to take a slight inclination up somewhere to about here. Again, not enough that we're doing an under-over, but it's just to give the layout a little bit of depth. And that becomes important with both a... Uh, landscaping feature here with our cricket club and the faulty towers hotel at the other end which i'm just trying to give a little bit of that kind of depth to so really that's all that's going on there but it's going to be pretty cop this is the most complicated because obviously we're going to have the um the point work that goes with it so that's why i've got what i need so we've got our various different points now to all of you saying hang on we've got peak on hornby I don't have any problem. I'm not trying to be a purist or anything with this. I'm more than happy with the way uh, the Hornby track looks, the way it works. You know, no problem at all regarding DCC operation and whereby I will probably just put the little um, spring-loaded clips into the points just to keep it going. I'm not doing block detection and complication like that. The previous stuff's worked well for me. Anyone that sort of says, hey, that uh, doesn't quite look real enough. Well, looking back on my previous layouts and that, I was very happy with it. It really didn't bother me. The scenery disguised it quite well. And I think most importantly, this is one where, again, I like my longer rakes of trains, whether it be freight trains or passengers, and I want to just see long trains running. So at the end of the day, apart from, uh, which brings us then to the next point, but the whole idea is points, uh, is there's really not that many points on the entire layout. We're just going to have these beautiful, nice big runs traveling around, and that's what it's all about. So the reason also regarding the uh, Hornby points as well, just using the CAD software as well, is um, when I built this, I worked exactly using the geometry of what the Hornby um, radiuses and all that were about. As mentioned in other videos, I have these uh, templates for all your different radiuses we can use. But the whole idea is I've got just enough track at the moment now to basically create the two loops that are happening here. So we've got these two loops that are going to happen here. And then obviously this one has this third one that's going to come down and into the board and travel down to the fiddle yard. Um, so we've got everything we need here because the single most complicated thing is just getting all of this right. Once this is all set in the right thing, we've made our cuts in the board and all the angles work and we can test it with the coaches to make sure everything goes around right, then we're on an absolute winner. The rest doesn't really matter. We can literally just take track, slap it down and get on with the landscaping and having a good time. This is the most complicated thing. So we're just working with standard geometry here at the moment, a little bit of shuffling and pokery, but expect to be seeing quite some of that happening this year. So that's why I thought, let's just make sure we've got everything we need so we can now start having a jolly good play and seeing how this is all going to work down. Toward the end of 2021, separate to Christmas aside here, was trying to come up with what is going to happen with the point operation. As I've mentioned before, I'm really big on the whole operation of it and was going to use wire in tube for doing it. I'm not completely ruling that out still. But in the moment, again, we're not really talking about many points here. So I am going to go with the DCC concepts 
and it's the uh, Cobalt, uh, Alpha, and, and uh, the series of their uh, point motors. Tortoise, all the they're much and much the same. Uh, I just went with this one because the solution seemed the most logical. So in which case, again, nothing to do with Christmas. I purchased them earlier and just haven't had a chance to shoot a video with them. Um, so in the boxes, and I really do appreciate, it's fantastic packaging. I mean, at the end of the day, I just need, I really need what I need. I don't need the, I didn't buy it for the box now, did I? So this is obviously our uh, control module that we have. Again, very over the top packaging. Um, but my point here is what we're up to, it's this particular box here. And uh, I did actually, I should give you the full experience there, work with one of these um, point controller units where basically it's just a pre-wired switchboard which gives me access to 12 uh, points. And then I started thinking about it. We know we're gonna have about three or four points here. And on the feature section where the station is in the middle, there's probably gonna be three, maybe four points there just to give a bit of uh, character and excitement in that section of the layout. And that's really about it. Like I said, the oil refiner in the corner, I'm still not sure how I'm gonna make use of the space. It might be sort of one of those um, fake sort of looking things. I'm not too sure. And the other thing is underneath into the fill yard that's running underneath here, where I've worked out we can have, I've forgotten now, six or eight uh, uh, lines ready to go. That's pretty much going to be pretty much all manual. Um, uh, something special, I'm gonna talk about that later down the track when we get down there. Uh, but for the moment, there really isn't that much. So I found this unit to be clean and tidy with everything I need. And uh, we'll come back to that a little later on, including why we need to have this little uh, uh, sniffer there to make sure we've got everything where it needs to be. Nice and clean wiring, so plenty of excitement that will be happening there. Today, it's the festive time. You all have places and things to do. And what a tremendous gift that actually was supposed to be here last Christmas, but made its arrival this year. Blue Diesels and British Railway Sandwiches. Now, this is a tremendous book. I have a, um, again, most of the layout is focused on the era of that sort of uh, uh, very, very late sort of 50s and, and really moving into the sort of uh, uh, early 90s. So particularly British um, uh, Rail with the blue, there's gonna be a lot of that to be seen. And it's a tremendous book filled with some excellent pictures. I will be 100% honest, and if the author ever uh, spots me mentioning this, uh, there's not enough about the railway sandwiches. We need more about that. Uh, look, it's a tremendous book, uh, you know, you, as you can imagine. And as, as the author points out, while some of the pictures weren't maybe some of the best, it was better to have a picture rather than no picture. And what I really, really appreciated is probably uh, trackside detail and stuff like that. When you're just trying to, um, every time we're just trying to make that perfect piece look even better, we're always taking inspiration from uh, Model Railway magazines and real place locations. And uh, absolutely tremendous uh, book. I'd recommend anyone to pick it up. Beautiful hardcover. Check that out. Girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, keeping it nice and quick. We're gonna see a lot more happening this year in the uh, model railway department. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, stay safe. Toodles.